The past decade has not been a great one for the New York Jets, and you can attribute that to the draft. The New York Jets have been one of the worst drafting teams over the past decade, evidenced by multiple general managers losing their jobs over that period. But now with Joe Douglas, it looks like the Jets have a good cohesive plan moving forward. However, it was a decade that was marred by bad decisions throughout the entire draft, and the Jets have plenty of picks that ended up being busts. So on this episode, let's look at the top 10 New York Jets draft busts of the 2010s. Number 10, Darren Lee. Now, when drafting players, you want to find guys that fit your scheme. But unfortunately for the Jets, a lot of these draft picks were trying to fit a square peg through a round hole. And one of the great examples was Darren Lee. Darren Lee coming out of a college was a great weak side outside linebacker with good athleticism. But the Jets drafted him to play to play inside linebacker in a 3-4 defense. It wasn't always pretty for Lee. He had off the field issues, multiple injuries, and never played a full 16 game with the Jets. And the sad part is when it looked like he might be turning the corner with three interceptions in his third season with the Jets, he was traded by Adam Gase and Adam Gase's first move as interim general manager. But it does seem like the Jets made out great with a six round draft pick. While he barely even played with Kansas City, only playing in two games last season. While it is frustrating that he did get a Super Bowl ring out of the experience, it doesn't look like this was a move and a player that will come back to haunt the Jets for letting him go. Number 9, Kyle Wilson. Kyle Wilson's an interesting player. Coming out of college, he was hyped as a first-round cornerback, and the Jets were looking to get a great corner to help pair with Darrell Rivas. However, with the Jets... It never really worked out. In five years with the team, he only had three interceptions and really struggled in the man-to-man defensive coverage. Now, he did have some nice shining moments, but the thing is, when you're drafting a corner in the first round, you're expecting a high-quality corner that, at the very least, is going to be a solid number two. The Jets never got that player, and it was a bad decade overall drafting cornerbacks. We'll get to more of that in a little bit. And it also didn't help, too, that the Jets passed on Jerry Hughes, who was also on the board. Number eight, Quinnen Copels. Now, the Jets have always been looking for a pass rusher this decade, and Copels was hyped to be just that guy. And after a rookie season where he had five and a half sacks, it looked like the Jets might have something. But then the Jets decided to move him out of his natural position of defensive end to stand up outside linebacker in a move that never seemed like it was going to work. Given that Copels, while he was a good athlete and had the tools to be a 4-3 end, he didn't have the athleticism to be a stand up outside linebacker. And it was woefully clear very early that it wasn't going to work. Kopel soon found a favor with the Jets and would end up being released by the team. And even though he tried to stick on with the Rams, his NFL career never really took off after that. But still, given that this was a first-round pick that the Jets were hoping would be an elite edge rusher, it was a very disappointing draft pick that, once again, was a huge waste finding a defensive edge rusher. The second round has not been kind to the New York Jets. They have had a lot of misses in that round, and one of the biggest ones was Stephen Hill. Hill was billed as being the next Calvin Johnson because, of course, he went to Georgia Tech. He was similar in height, similar in weight, and also similar in a 40-yard dash. However, there's a big difference looking like Calvin Johnson and actually playing like Calvin Johnson. Hill had an underwhelming Jets career with only 600 yards and four touchdowns in two years. What was even more frustrating that the Jets could have gotten some great second round talent with another great wide receiver, Alshon Jeffrey, and Bobby Wagner still on the board. This was a draft pick that the Jets wished they would have had back because even though they believed Hill was going to be the second coming of Megatron, instead, he just turned out to be a bunch of rusty parts. Number six, Devin Smith. Sticking with the second round wide receiver bus, Devin Smith had to be even more frustrating because he had more ACL injuries too than touchdowns with the Jets won. He was supposed to be a dynamic wide receiver out of Ohio State, but only played two seasons with the Jets for 10 catches and one touchdown. It's actually funny because he did make a comeback to play with Dallas last year and had a touchdown catch with the Cowboys. So in one season, he had the same amount of touchdowns as he did with the New York Jets. And while it's great to see Devin Smith back in the league, especially after two ACL injuries, it's hard for the Jets to look back on this player who they were hoping to be an explosive wide receiver to help develop the offense, who just couldn't stay healthy and once again had more injuries than touchdown catches. That is never a good thing. 
Number five, Jace Amaro. I'm sensing a theme with the second round. Looking for playmaking, pass catchers. John Idzik billed Jace Amaro as one of the next great pass catching tight ends in the league. Although he only played one season with the Jets, caught 300 yards and two touchdown catches. Yeah, it was it was frustrating, especially because there were two great pass catchers still on the board. You might know them as Jarvis Landry, who has had more catches than anyone since he's been brought to the league, and Devontae Adams. Two elite playmakers that are still dominating in the league, and Jay Samaro was only on the field for one season with the New York Jets. Ouch. Number four, Calvin Pryor. Uh, another great pick of the Izakira. Only played three seasons with the team until he was traded for Cleveland. Arguably the best thing Calvin Pryor did for the Jets was being the trade rate to bring back Demario Davis, even though it was for one year. But that one year was still more productive than Pryor's three previous seasons. Now, Jamal Adams has become the best safety in the game, but when he was drafted, many thought Calvin Pryor would be that player. Drafted highly in the first round, the Jets believed he would be a dynamic playmaker in the secondary. However, the Louisville slugger was a big strikeout. He struggled making big plays on defense, struggled in the run game, and after three seasons, the Jets were fed up with his performance and moved on to Cleveland. He ended up in Jacksonville and has been out of the league for years. Number three, Ja'Kai Polite. Now it's just getting really, really painful. We have to look back on this draft and wonder, was this one of the final straws in the great Mike McCagnan and Adam Gase debate? Because don't forget, it came out that Adam Gase wasn't exactly happy with Mike McCagnan's decision making in the draft, and this could be a great example why. Ja'Kai Polite was hyped up early in the draft process as being a late first round edge rusher. However, it did not go well after that. At the combine, he ran a 4.84 which was well below where he was projected, and he bombed multiple combine interviews for the points where teams flat out took him off the board. Look, I have to be honest, even at the time, I actually thought this was a good pick because I thought he was a first-round talent that the Jets could potentially steal in the third round. Now I have some egg on my face because looking back, this was a complete disaster, mainly because he didn't make it through the first training camp. Look, the first three rounds of the draft, you're looking for players that are going to be starters for you, that are going to make immediate contributions to the roster. And given a draft where the Jets didn't even have a second round pick, the fact that their third round pick couldn't make it out of camp was terrifying. And even though a lot of Jet fans don't like Adam Gase, you have to side with him a little bit looking at what Mike McCadden's last draft with the Jets ended up being and going, maybe he had a point. Number two, Christian Hackenberg, another great Jet that never saw the field. His greatest contribution to the Jets was a seventh round draft pick he was traded for by the Oakland Raiders, who he's promptly cut from, and his career ended in spectacular fashion with the Memphis Express. It's never a good thing when the Jets bomb at the quarterback position. I mean, really until Sam Darnold, they had bombed a couple of times, especially in this decade in the second round. And Hackenberg was frustrating because after year it became apparent that the Jets didn't have faith in him and wasted a second round pick. The only thing that made this a little bit better was the fact that the Jets didn't dramatically trade up for him or select him in the first round. But still, when you're picking a quarterback who you believe could be a franchise quarterback and you realize he can't even make the roster or take snaps in meaningless football games, this has to be one of the great whiffs of the decade. Now, before we get to number one, we have to do two dishonorable mentions because there were so many draft picks that I had to include these in here because I know a lot of you are going to be saying, wait, you're missing two very important people, but the reason they're off the list is because even though they didn't have great careers with the Jets, they were actually somewhat productive unlike the rest of this list. The first one is Leonard Williams. Now, Leonard Williams had 17 sacks in four seasons with the Jets and was a good run defender. I mean, if he was a third-round pick, he would have been solid. But the problem was the Jets picked him with the sixth overall pick, and he was hyped as the best defensive player in the entire draft. Williams has massively underperformed, but the good news is 
the Jets got great value back from getting a third round pick from the New York Giants and a fourth round pick that will be coming to them in the upcoming 2021 draft. So the Jets have gotten a nice return for Leonard Williams. And even though Williams wasn't the player that Jets hoped he would be, at least he was somewhat productive, unlike a lot of guys on this list. And the second is Geno Smith. And I know, I know, he's not a great quarterback. He's more of a backup, but he did go 8-8 eight and eight as the quarterback for the Jets as a rookie. Now, we all know about the maturity issues and that terrible second season. But given that the Jets also drafted a quarterback in the second round that didn't even see the field, the fact that they found a quarterback that could win 11 games in the NFL and go 8-8 eight and eight as a starter is somewhat of a miracle in itself. Now, Geno Smith was projected as a first-round pick. The Jets got him in the second round. They didn't trade up for him, so they didn't lose a bunch of capital. And the fact that Geno Smith won 11 games with the Jets as a second-round pick, when you look at some of the other second-round picks... It's kind of hard to say it was the biggest second round bust of the past decade when there's been so many bad second round busts. But without further ado, let's get to number one on the list. And that is D. Milliner. The Jets just traded Darrell Rivas and were looking for another great corner. And they thought D. Milliner would be that guy. Much like Leonard Williams, he was a top 10 draft pick, selected at number nine overall. And it was an unmitigated disaster. He only played in 21 career games with the Jets, which, saying it seems actually like a lot more games than he actually played in, with only three interceptions, which also feels like a lot more interceptions than he actually had. But it was a frustrating pick for the New York Jets, especially because the Jets had two first-round picks in that draft. Now, while they did hit on the second one in Sheldon Richardson, the first one was devastating because this was a top 10 pick that Jets could have gotten a cornerstone player for the next decade, and instead they got one of the biggest cornerback busts of all time. A cornerback that couldn't even make it through his third season because of injuries, and even when he was healthy, he struggled on the field. And the Jets seemingly cannot break the cycle of finding a great cornerback in the first round that isn't named Darrell Revis. And that's our list. Who do you think was the biggest Jets draft bust of the 2010s? Would love to hear that in the comments. Make sure to comment below. And hey, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of our latest content on the New York Jets and the NFL. We have so much coming for you, especially as we gear toward the 2020 season. You're not going to want to miss any of that. Only here on Rich Sports Talk.